Big Mac, filet of fish, quarter pounder, French fries, icy Coke, thick shakes, sundaes, and apple pies. Big Mac, filet of fish, quarter pounder, French fries, icy Coke, thick shakes, sundaes, and apple pies. Big Mac, filet of fish, quarter pounder, French fries, icy Coke, thick shakes, sundaes, and apple pies. Big Mac, filet of fish, quarter pounder, French fries, icy Coke, thick shakes, sundaes, and apple pies. The film is called Let the Meat Cake, and it's a documentary about. Um, the implementation of the school nutrition policy in Texas, which in layman's terms essentially banned junk food in a sort of a tiered program from elementary school to high school and started limiting the amount of access to sugar or non-healthy foods to kids in all of these grades. And they did it in a number of ways by uh, changing the product mix and vending machines and talking about um, you know, the politics of having vending machines in schools looking at the school lunch programs, looking at um, any, kind of, uh, any kind of food product that competed with the school lunch program, um, as well as the kinds of snacks that kids were eating every day. I don't know, but I have another one right here, so. <laughs> Plus another burger. We want another fry. Another burger. Another fry. So as you can see, I will be obese someday. The kids had a pretty set notion of what it was that they were eating, what they liked and what they didn't like. Um, they were not anywhere near as open to suggestion or to policies being uh, you know, uh, implemented um, in a way that was going to really impact whether or not they had a choice between junk food and health food. Starting in the late 1990s, schools began to make contracts with soft drink companies to allow exclusive marketing of one or another soft drink in the school. And the result of that was, was to put a lot of vending machines into schools. Now it turns out if you've got vending machines in schools, kids use them. Parents give their kids money, the kids go and buy the stuff. And what went into the vending machine were products of that particular company. And the schools got a lot of discretionary money from the companies, and everybody thought it was a win-win situation. The school principal said, well, the kids are going to drink soft drinks anyway. What's wrong with having them in school? Without really thinking through the consequences, if they're there, that kids will consume more of them. My name is Chanel Bridges, and this is my lunch. This is what I eat every day. M&M cookies, munchies, Cheetos. I eat this every day on a daily basis. I never eat the cafeteria food because I've gotten sick from it before, so I'll never eat it again. This is my lunch. We have the most obese children in the country, in Texas, and we have the highest rates of diabetes um, of any other state in the country. And it's costing literally um, billions of dollars in taxpayer um, funded you know health care initiatives to respond to these you know obesity and diabetes crises when we have a a particular condition which drives like eight of the top chronic diseases most specifically in Texas diabetes and you look at the long-term cost of that disease that chronic disease by itself it can literally destroy the state budget, destroy our ability to provide, among other things, public education. Well, I'd really like it to be uh, distributed in an educational market. I think that um, the, the audience that can best be uh, assisted or helped by the film are really kids and parent, parents and school administrators and teachers, the people who are really dealing with these issues, you know, on the ground floor. I did a film a few years ago called The Soup Peddler with super low production values. You know, I think I used a TRV 900 and rode around on the back of a pickup truck following my friend Dave who bicycle delivers soup. But really the film was more about community and it was more about sort of the loss of community in the United States and there were these heavy themes that were underlying um, what was, you know, in essence, a kind of a feel-good little picture. And I never really took it that seriously, but it did really, really well. It, I, it aired on PBS and got, it got accepted at every film festival I submitted it to. It still has not, not been accepted to a film festival. So I was really puzzled when Let the Meat Cake, which I thought was a better film in, in many respects, um, didn't get the same kind of response. And I, I really had to think hard about why that was, and I realized that it was because there really wasn't any kind of emotional connection. And I guess that's the most important lesson that I've learned in film school. It's a no-brainer. 
um, any filmmaker, you know, will tell you that sort of, you know, lesson 101 in filmmaking is if your audience doesn't connect to your film, there's really no point in showing it because then it's just a bunch of images sort of stacked together. And I didn't work hard enough to um, have people connect emotionally with any one of the kids in the story. So if I had followed one of the kids or if I had, you know, had more of a central character, um, I think the response to the film might have been different. I would love to stay in Austin. I have a house here. I have a really supportive, awesome community. I've tried to leave several times and I keep coming back because I can't find people anywhere else like I can find in Austin. But I do worry that, um, in my field anyway, that it's going to be difficult to do the kind of work that I want to do and, uh, and be in Austin. I may have to consider going to New York or LA and I'm thinking about that now. But it doesn't make me happy to think about that. My goal now is the same as it was when I went into grad school for film, and that is to make um, high quality um, documentary content that starts dialogue about subjects that are important to me personally and subjects that I think um, need to be explored in more depth socially, and I still have that goal. So whether I do that independently or whether I do that for a third party, um, frankly, doesn't really matter to me as long as the subject matter is interesting to me and I feel like it's you know something that I should be working on. I'm not so interested in you know helping the world have another reality TV show. I, I don't think that. Um, I guess I'm at the point in my life where I'd really like to contribute and you know contribute content that's um, gives people a little bit more to think about.